Good evening from Rocky Mountain PBS. This is Arts District. I'm Cynthia Hessen. It was definitely a man's world in the 1960s when pop art came to life in London and New York. Think Andy Warhol, Roy Lichtenstein, or Peter Max. One of the few women who broke through the top echelon at that time was a pioneer in soft sculpture. Jan Haworth used the domestic art of sewing to stand out from her male counterparts. These are her signature donuts made of fabric. A showing of Haworth's work was chosen for the recent reopening of the Emanuel Gallery at CU Denver on the Auraria campus. Art history is a way of bundling um, ideas and artists don't fit within bundles very easily. They keep going tangential if they're any good, but they want to smash their own work as well as everyone else's and find something new, find a new path, you know, get a new language. It's very important to me that an idea isn't simply a single idea. I like uh, crossbreeding ideas so that I think you get power there. In more than 50 years of making art, Jan Haworth has become very clear about always being ready for a new idea. As a young student at the Slade Art School in the UK, she was on a bus when the idea of soft sculpture came to her, and it was her first claim to fame, making her a player in the pop art movement of the 1960s. When I hit on the idea of doing things in fabric, it was like, oh, I gotcha. You know, because you don't know this, and I do, and it's a female form, and nobody can compete with me because I knew so much about sewing. My stepmother was a, a fashion designer, so I, I'm a pretty good seamstress, and um, so all of that then kind of came to life in the idea of um, doing the kind of sculpture that I wanted to do because I knew the shape of the body through pattern making. There's a wonderful anonymous quilt that's in one of the quilt books that I got that um, the woman says, um, every piece of my life is sewn up in that quilt. There's my husband's waistcoat, there's my wedding dress, there's my daughter's uh, christening gown. The choice of pieces in this exhibition was made by curator Jeff Lamson who saw a theme about the rise of women that is inherent in Haworth's work at the beginning and today. I used to work at the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C., and we had one of Jan's artworks in, in the permanent collection. And in the 60s, she was a really prominent artist, and particularly there were not very many women who were showing in London at the time. It was Jan, Yoko Ono, and Bridget Riley were really the three most prominent uh, women artists. But she's still very much owns that language of, of sewing, and that gives it a lot of um, associations with how we view women in the West and what their roles are. And, and I think that's been a continual thread throughout all of her work. Haworth also co-designed the album cover often called the most iconic in history for the Beatles' Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. She and her then-husband, Peter Blake, put together a set, a background for the Fab Four, with life-sized cutouts of recognizable pop figures of 1967. There was no way to know then what a sensation it would become. It was a commission, you know, and we, you know, did it in a couple of weeks or 10 days. That was not bad money then. He had 100 pounds, I had 100 pounds, that's okay. And, you know, it's been a calling card for both of us in different guises. Um, Haworth has so gone no. on to design costumes, illustrate children's books, and create her own art pieces that often revolve around the social currents of women. It's fairly ornery. Um, I, I really really wanted to take um, the sort of male art history and turn it all into donuts. For her, it's been a natural progression. That I um, took a piece of uh, Sgt. Pepper and I put my face on the kind of figure of Diana Doors. Ever since she faced her first challenge to be taken seriously when she inquired about enrolling in the Slade Art School. And so I said to this particular tutor, how do I do this? Can I, do I just put my portfolio of work that I've done this first term together and then go see Ian Jenkins and say, um, could you look at my portfolio because I'd like to go on a credit system? Um, and he, he looked at me and said, no. He said, 
the female students really don't have to show their portfolios. We look at their photographs. They're, they're here to keep the boys happy. <laughs> so, but it gave me a mission. <laughs> Jan's charm bracelets are a great example. I think that speaks to different generations. In, uh, I know my mom has really tried to pass down this tradition to my daughter of, of giving her a charm for special events, and I think that's something that probably means a lot to a certain generation and sort of been lost, but it now is coming back again. But you don't have to have a PhD in art history to understand the language of charm bracelets. It is that accessibility of Jan Haworth's work that Lamson especially likes, coupled with her history in pop art. Haworth herself is comfortable with that, but she doesn't dwell in the past. What's next is so much more compelling. So I love it when I break new ground. If that is in pop art, that's fine. If it's called abstract expressionism, <laughs> that's fine too. <laughs> I don't mind. Um, and if it's called surrealism, I don't mind. It's not till you come to the subplot and the cross, uh, crossing of those two things that it really ignites and you really think, oh, I have to do that, I have to do that right now. <laughs>